It's been 30 years since the coup, 1990, and uh, we commemorate this today, July 27th. I have on set, you saw her a little earlier, Diana Mahabia Wyatt, we, she'll be chatting with us. But right now I have on set uh, Noel Simeon. You might have seen him behind the scenes, but what you may not know is that uh, Noel Simeon, we call him Sayo, was in fact here at TTT at the time during the coup. Hi, Sayo. I'll call you Sayo this yeah, morning, yeah. right? Good morning. Good morning. Um, I don't know if you've spoken publicly like this in this type of forum. I know no, you've not, I spoke already, but not like Not like this. No. Um, take us back to that Friday. What was it like here? At what happened? Okay, um, the Sayo came to work maybe about around four o'clock. And just behind these walls here, um, I came in, a program was going on, and I was looking to move around to see the other guys and thing, and then uh, I realized the football in the stadium, mm -hmm. we had a feed right here, so I decided to stay right in um, studio control to watch the game. Mm -hmm. And a guy had passed and said, um, they just before six a minute, two minutes or six or whatever, um, so does it have a, a man outside with a gun, right? So all of you just look back. I was sitting on a stool with wheels. I just wheeled back, watch at my supervisor, Hugh Pierre, singing with the phone. Mm -hmm. When he see me looking at him, he put down the phone hard. He says, Sayo, let me go and see. He say, you, you, you serious? He say, let me go. I say, all right. So two of us went round the corridor. Now, from a distance, we could see where the security was supposed to be. We didn't see no security. So we still creeping up looking. We see that two school kids were sitting down on the counter in the lobby. Mm -hmm. And then we see the security was a, was a woman, and she was lying down flat on her belly. Mm -hmm. so we ain't seen the gunman as yet, but see, we, we seen this long pointed thing up in here. It seemed like the gunman was bending down, mm -hmm. and he had this rifle up in here. And when we saw him now, we just turned around and ran for our lives. So my supervisor went back into his office. I came in back where I was, studio control, and I tell any guys, and I'm, hey, the street boys, they have a man outside with a gun. Yeah. So I remember the, the director at the time was Kewal. Mm -hmm. And he said, man, say we have security to, to deal with that. I said, okay, but <clears throat> the security right now wants your belly. Yeah. So other guys was asking me questions and things, you know. And I don't know if you could remember back then, the wall, after this wall had a long glass. Right. You could see anybody coming right. around the corridor. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I see the fellow coming around the corridor. I say, hey, look, the man coming. And then everybody stood up. I will I run through the other room. Mm -hmm. and look through the next door. The guy say, hey, all you, all you come out from there. And why come out into the studio here? We had a program in the, in the studio. I come out in the studio, right through this door right here. And now these guys was in the studio now taking off the headset. But I ain't studying them. Because nobody around. at the time knew no. what was going no. on. Yeah. I run through the back door, looking at the wall in the back, in the backyard, and so jump the wall. And then I hear some gunshots. Remember Radio Trinidad was mm. in the back there. Because mm -hmm. Emmett Hennessy was shot right. when he was attempting to jump the wall, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And we had Channel 9 Studios, so I decided to go in Channel 9 Studios. But then I realized, I'm by myself. I'm not hiding by myself. So I come back into this studio and I tell any guys what, what happened and thing. You know, next thing I see the fellow coming through this door, you know. I see, boy, like this man after so me. So how many were there at that time? At that time, oh, just, just one the same person, one. Just right. one person okay. that we, we saw. Mm -hmm. So I see, like, this man after me. was like, he following me now. So we went down to Channel 9 and hide. And that, it, it could be for about two hours before we name was called out, right? So there was a list of who no, was working? No not, no, no, not really, but it seems like um, the other guys that they held before, they asked them if they know anybody that hiding, right. if they could go and call them out. Right. And Buddy Andrews, you know, Buddy Andrews was one of my best friends here. And right. He really knows Sayo and Jimmy and Larry. Not Larry, every time I'm um, with James and Samad, you know, right. Samad. So, right. we, so, so we hear this voice calling out with him. Nobody knew to answer. Yeah. Then I think James decided to answer, buddy, what going on there, boy? See, all they, all they come out now, all they come out now. So we peep in through and see buddy. Mm -hmm. We see buddy alone, eh? Yeah. But the gunman was behind the door. Yeah. So he's after he come out and I say, buddy, things good, I think good. He said, where are you, the Muslims take over? Mm 
Yeah. Let me ask you something, uh, because we're getting close to the news, but we're going to uh -huh. take it over. We're going to continue after the top of the hour for the news. Mm -hmm. But what was it like? I know there are stories of what you guys had to eat or not eat. What was it like? For how many days were you? Six, six days. Six days yeah. you were here. What was it like? It was hell. Hell. Because when, uh, when we were caught and we were brought in the studio, we started to see faces. Everybody with about four or five guns. One individual with about four or five guns, yeah. But bag of bullets on his shoulders. I remember right here at that table with biscuit, cheese, soft drinks, cigarettes, whatever, you know. And I remember this, they say now, well, look, fellas, all you could take all you want here. Well, I just smoke cigarettes, eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I pick up two pack of cigarettes, I put it in my pocket, I pick up, I open a pack of quicks, I take out about five quicks. Mm -hmm. It's going to be about 10 minutes, and I need to eat one. Chip it up in my mouth and spit it out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nervousness. Nervousness. But there were rumors that you guys were eating butter at one yeah, point. Is that, that true? Yes. That was a couple days after. We were upstairs at the time, and a Muslim come with a, um, a blue band butter. He said, fellas, see what you can do with that, and throw it. Mm. Somebody catch it, open it. And then he come back, he said, hey, no, give me it back, give me it back. Yeah. We did the boil water, throw the butter in the water, and mm, it tastes like seamless. Yeah, yeah. You know, there are some younger people who may not have experience. They mm. were born either just after, just before. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, there's this conversation as to why is it important to talk about this? Why is it necessary to keep rehashing? I've heard um, some young people say, oh, well, get over it now, man. It's and one mm. young person in particular said that they can't picture Trinidad and Tobago without guns because they were born into Trinidad and Tobago where guns are prevalent. That's all they know. Mm. What do you say to this? It's, uh, um, every year, 27th of July, that's come around. Right? And when that comes around, we talk always around. So we could never forget it. Every year have a 27th of July. We could never forget it. I want you to stay yeah. on set with me. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we have Diana Mahabia Wyatt on set. And we're going to be talking about why is it important to commemorate 1990. Do stay with us. We're back after the news, live on studio here on Now. 1990, but children still wonder in their boats, their jungles, their deserts, until they drop off in the spring. Mama shrugs and sleeps. <laughs> Deja vu, I suppose. 1990, when our children stand firm. As you remember, uh, 1990, the coup that took place 30 years today, one of our camera operators, very young, was you know, remarking, wow, I've never seen this footage before, which is so important why we have to commemorate. And we'll be talking with uh, Diana Mahabia Wyatt a little later on as to the significance of commemorating the coup uh, year on year. But I continue my conversation with Noel Simeon uh, Sayo, who is camera operator here at TTT and who, in fact, was here for six days as a hostage uh, during the coup in 1990. Uh, Sayo, you, before the break for the news, you were mm -hmm. speaking about the conditions uh, that you had to undergo, and you were talking about having to eat butter at one point, uh, mm -hmm. boiled butter. Mm -hmm. um, what? Tell us more of what was happening at that time. I think you were mentioning something about the type of water that you guys had to drink. Yes. Um, the Saturday evening was hell outside. To me, like bombs and things, I don't know what was happening. For that day, they bombed the building in the back here. Mm -hmm. right? and after the little in the fire and thing, um, the imam came to us and he said, um, fellas, um, the soldiers moving in on us. And he's taking our, our men from around we all and we'll be going outside and fight till the last man. And if all they live good lives, we would see all in paradise. Yes. <laughs> At the time now, we, um, we was talking like if the soldiers body building with board it with tear gas. And we decide, well, you know what, Imam give a little something with water so we could tear up some cloth and you know, soak mm -hmm. soak it in water and thing. They bring it for us a dustbin, eh? Mm -hmm. A short dustbin. 
after all of that now, well, you come back and you say, um, negotiation going on, you might be going out just now, all kind of thing. He said, from that same dustbin, that water we was drinking, we had a whole lot. Drink, pass it to you, pass it to the next one. Yeah. Mm. So you had nightmares, are you? Not really again, but at other time, mm -hmm. was. Do you think you are healed? Mm. No. As I say, Lisa, every year, I have a July like 27, and the talk has come, come around. You understand? I just be around, somebody might say, hey, you see that man, he was in, he, he, he was yeah. a hostage, and yeah. somebody would ask me, you know, and and I would talk it, uh, others usually talk it. Mm -hmm. what, what allows you to be able to talk? Because there are some people who, uh, you know, who say, I can't, I can't speak about this right now, I can't talk about it. I mean, seeing people like Bernard Pantin, and so this was uh, when you guys were yes, leaving. Yes, this is, uh, yeah? Uncle Laura, um, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. Laura. Yeah. And you know, he, he was my best man when I got married, this yeah. man, yeah? yeah? Yeah. How are you able to talk about it? He said, sometimes I, sometime mm -hmm. I will talk, sometimes mm -hmm. I would, sometimes I wouldn't, I wouldn't talk, then sometimes, you know, I'll just edit it, cut it short. Yes. You know? And then sometimes I just really want people to know what we went through. Yeah. Uh, do you guys stay in touch? We saw some of your colleagues from 1990, but I think you might be one of the few persons mm. from that time still working at TTT. I am the only person. You're the only person. Not still working in the sense that I yeah. moved on and then I came back. Right, right. right. Um, but do you stay in touch with some of the other... Y yes, and then um, this year was the first time most of us came together because we had a 30 year reunion, mm -hmm. 30 years reunion, you know, mm -hmm. and, and somebody talk always here and, hey, <laughs> some, you know, it, it wasn't, some wasn't nice, we laugh at it, and then some, you know, was... <laughs> so it's sort of therapeutic yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, there is, I got a message during the break that there was a rumor of a bomb in a cardboard box. Was that true? Yes. No, uh, I'm not too sure if it was true, but we saw a carib case with some wires running out from it. And remember I told you earlier on, um, Mr. Baca said he wouldn't bomb, bomb me up, right? And I remember uh, Sats this Sunday. I was going to use the bathroom, and one of the guys was telling me, Sayo, when you, when you walk out, the, if you could follow the wire to see where the wire is going. I said, that was Buddy. I said, Buddy, me? He said, he said, yeah, follow the wire and see where the wire is going. I said, it's as soon as I come out the door, the bathroom is going to the right, mm -hmm. the wire going to the left. I said, oh, God, well, I'm going to the right. I'm not following <laughs> that going to the left. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I want to say something though. We had a transistor radio with yeah. us. We was hearing music, something we was hearing talking, and sometimes the radio on right through it, and sometimes you, you're hearing, sometimes you, you, you ain't hearing, but it on. One song did play, and as soon as the song start, everybody heard it. No, no, we ain't going home. Mm. That was the song. So and when, when we heard that song, same guy who was on the screen a lot, right? Take that video and mash it up in pieces. There was a lot of anger. Anger. As soon as we hear that song. Is there still a lot of anger among the community? No, no. No, everybody's... No. Yeah. Uh, before we go across yeah. to uh, Diana Mahavia Wyatt, yeah. who's in studio with us, you, during the break you told me, remind you to mention Jones P. Madeira. Yes, um, Mr. Madeira, he's a real leader. Mm -hmm. He's a real leader because many times, he, you know, they would call him, and he would go and bullets pelting, flying, and, and this man will go and then he, sometimes he will come back with bad news, sometimes he come back with good news. But he's a real gentleman. And nothing I have with him, anytime I see him, as I say, Mr. Madeira, thank you for 14 years of life after 90. Mm -hmm. Thank you for 15 years of life after 90. I know Mr. Madeira is not well right now, and I want to tell him, thank you for. 30 years post 90. So for you there's mm. 1990, it, it, there's a pre-90 and a post-90 yeah. in your life. Yeah. That's how you define yeah. it mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. I'm very emotional right now, mm. as I'm sure many of our viewers are. And I want to thank you so much, Noel, for sharing so openly with us. Mm. 
and agreeing to do this. I know it's been difficult, but we really appreciate it. And I think it's important that persons who may not have experienced uh, the 1990 coup can come to understand what persons who went through it, just even if it's a little bit of understanding as to what they went through and why it's important to commemorate. And we have with us on set Diana Mahabia Wyatt, member of the Commission of Inquiry into the 1990 attempted coup. Good morning, Diana. And you're there, you listen to Noel's entire uh, presentation. What are your think? What are your thoughts? On I, I, am <coughs> I am actually very impressed by the testimony that you gave, Mr. Simeon. It was, it was very heartfelt, and you could feel the reality of it. I felt there for a minute that I was in that room with a box and the wires leading out of it. Just um, apropos that, one of the things that we did learn on the Commission of Inquiry, which went on for almost two years, um, was that there was nothing in that box, that it was there to scare you, to scare all of you, and uh, to keep you quiet, because you had been told that there was a bomb there. And if you do anything against what we were telling you to do, you're going to all be blown to smithereens. Mm -hmm. It was. One of the things I think that the Commission of Inquiry, um, one of the recommendations that it made, and the Commission of Inquiry made many recommendations, very few of which were ever uh, put into place. I think two were, and the two that were was one to improve the critical care unit of the uh, medical the, the whole medical system in Trinidad, that did not take place until a uh, pandemic, right. which was one of the things that was really important. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other things was to uh, speed up the administration of justice because people were really frustrated. And I'm not trying to excuse uh, what the uh, Jamaat did, yeah. but there was a real general feeling in the country at the time, which you would have remembered, Mr. Simeon, of you couldn't get justice because it would take years. And there were people up until this year who spent 20 years in confinement without even having their cases heard. Mm -hmm. That has changed because it's now being done um, by computer. Yes. And but that has that was one of the recommendations that the commission made. Mm -hmm. And it was only brought into reality because of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. It should not take a crisis like a pandemic to get us to improve the things that we know are wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And while the commission of inquiry um, made recommendations, this is the report. It's that big. Um, very few things have actually come to fruition as a result of it. But if I could just take up one thing that you said a little bit earlier, and that has to do with the understanding of history. One of the recommendations that was made was that we make the 27th of July a day of remembrance, not a public holiday, but a national day of remembrance. Officially, you mean? Officially. Yeah because it is only unofficially NGOs, the press, that will bring it up. And it is so important because I discovered that in our school curriculum, students don't learn about the 1970 revolt. They don't know that we had an army revolt in 1970. Mm -hmm. They don't know the names of Shah and LaSalle and the other people who were involved in that. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, a lot of them, a lot of young people, this is the future of our country, have yes. no interest in, do not know about 1990. Well, that is why um, I thought it was so important to have the conversation with Noel, because there was this ongoing conversation that, so what is the big deal, you know? Um, why you all don't just get over it? Because I don't think there was that understanding of what really happened and, um, and what people like Noel Simeon went through. And it struck me when I was speaking with Dominique, our talent producer, you know, and she mm -hmm. said, I said, well, for, as far as I remember, before 1990, the whole idea of a coup, uh, a gun, you know, in plain sight was just non-existent for me. Yeah, and many people thought it was play of the month, you know, when, when we saw it on television. Mm -hmm. And she said, really? 
because I was born, I can't think of a Trinidad and Tobago without guns. And that struck me, you see. So I think it's so important. But you tell us, why is it so significant that we remember 1990? Well, I think it's almost a truism that unless you know your history, you are bound to repeat it. And I don't think any sane person in this country wants to repeat the trauma that the country went through. Mm -hmm. It is, we've just had a very vivid description of what one small group of people here in TTT went through. But don't forget the rest of the country was traumatized oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. If there were time to go through the tra traumatic situations that people in Parliament went through, and though some of those people have not recovered, they're mentally and emotionally damaged for life. Yeah. There are physical damages as well, but they don't, it doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. And in the country, there is resentment still from a whole section of people whose lives and whose families' lives were literally destroyed as a result of the coup. And I'm afraid that somebody saying, well, we really shouldn't have done it, doesn't make any difference to their lives. Their lives are, are ruined. Yeah, yeah. So this evening, there's a panel discussion put on by Bukas Litfest, and you're a member of the panel. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us some more details about it and how members of the public can participate? Well, it will be one of those panel discussions where you can call in, which I think is important. Right. Uh -huh. And people should say what they felt and what they went through. I don't live too far away from TTT. I live up in the hill. And I had friends in TTT, and I could hear the gunfire going mm -hmm. off. And we sat there and listened. And it was far more important than the fact that there was a curfew and you had trouble getting food and all of that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Because you, know, you could live through six days with what you had in the house. But the, the fear for your, your friends and your colleagues and the people that you knew, I was in the Senate at the time. And my children were terrified mm -hmm. because um, yeah, go ahead. they thought that when they heard about what was happening in Parliament and the parliamentarians were there, they assumed, because nobody knew what was going on, they assumed that the rest of the parliamentarians would, they would be rounded up and taken to, I think there was actually a suggestion that they were going to do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, you were at the Red House when? No, no I okay. wasn't. All right. um, but my children hearing what was going on and having watched TTT and seeing the gun pointed um, at Jones's head, uh, they, they came, got me, took me away, and um, would not let me go back home for days, yes. but that was just me. I mean, there were hundreds of other people that yeah. were. Well, I remember being under the bed because I was hearing a lot of gunshots, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the uh, explosions, and I just was petrified. I was under the bed for most of, uh, you know, the period. That's what, m that's what my memory is of. And, you know, that was the time of party time, so we would have had meetings here. We didn't have a meeting that Friday for whatever reason. We weren't, there was no meeting for party time on that Friday. But by the time I got home and saw what was going on, I too thought it was a play. I really thought it was play of the month happening. I think, you know, definitely it's important to remember and there, there definitely has been some scarring and, and some healing. And I'm happy that Sayo says that he's not angry. You feel like, um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but. No, the, you see, the only problem in the sense that after two years, we had, we, we had a two years reunion and all of us was talking about compensation and in the sense that the, after the commission, financial thing that was recommended and... Mm. Mm. As in financial compensation. However, yeah. yeah. And nothing, nothing, yeah. nothing, nothing. Yeah. Well, this evening, the conversation is going to be ventilated even more. 
And is it by Zoom or what's the? How do people participate? It is. It is um, something similar to Zoom. It's a new technology that is being used. Okay. I can't explain it to you <laughs> because I'm not a, a technician. <laughs> right. Uh, we, we thought at first it would be Zoom, but they've got this brand new technology so that people can contact me, and it'll be streamed. Okay, so it will be streamed, and people can look at it, I guess, on YouTube. But I'd imagine just Google Book of Fest, and we have the information up just now on the screen if you wanted to participate in it this evening. Uh, what time is it? We're Where starting, um, well, we want to do the panel discussion before the 6 o'clock news. Right. So we will start around 5. Okay, so it's on Facebook Live. So persons can just log on to Facebook this evening, 5.30 p.m., and you can be part of the panel Remembering 1990, put on by the Bookers Lit Fest. All right, I want to thank my guests very specially for this extended segment, Remembering the co Diana Mahabia Wyatt and Noel Sayo Simeon. Yes. Noel, thank you. Thank you so much you. for sharing mm -hmm. with us this morning. We're going to take in a few messages. Come right back here on the Now Morning Show. Do stay with us.